Hi everyone, I'm so excited that you're here. My name's Carly, I'm a sewist here on YouTube. I'm super passionate about making stuff. And if you're new here, hi. Today, I want to make a workwear jacket. I've seen a lot of these kind of jackets and coats on my Instagram over the last year or so. Some people call them chore coats, some people call them workwear jackets. I think it's just like this sweet, boxy silhouette very practical, maybe made out of like a cotton or a cotton drill or duck. It's kind of like not too heavy, not too light. I love the functionality, I love the pockets, I love the collar, and I've been really thinking about them for a while. If you follow my Instagram, you maybe have known that I did make the Zero Waste Workwear Jacket by Birgitta Helmerson a few weeks ago. That's a cool pattern, I got gifted it for Christmas. I made it up in this royal blue cotton and I just put it on my body at the end of the process and I just felt really meh about it. It didn't feel like me, I didn't feel excited about it. It was like, I liked learning about this pattern, I liked the process, I'm proud of my work, and I don't like it on my body. And ever since that project, I just want to make my own version of it and see if I can make it make sense for me. So in this video, I think I'm going to pattern draft the jacket, try and figure out a vibe that works for me. I'm going to dye my own fabric. I've got some cream cotton laying around that I just don't feel excited by and I thought, let's dye it. So I'm going to give that a go using some natural dye techniques and then I'm going to make this thing. And hopefully we have fun. Also, I hope you're really excited but you're going to see more of my house in this video so you've been following me for a while. Enjoy. <laughs> Wait, but before we get into the video, I just really wanted to show you what I got at the thrift store yesterday. I'm kind of excited about it. They're just drying on my clothes line in the Australian sun. You guys know I thrift a lot because I mainly work with secondhand materials and it is exciting, but I feel like you need to go a lot to make sure that you can still find cool stuff. And yeah, let me show you what I got. I found these four cushion covers. They're sick. It's like a thick cotton canvas kind of vibe. And I'm really excited about them because I have a pattern that I want to make by Ann Tilly Handmade. It is called The Magic Pants. And it's going to be one of my YouTube videos coming up soon. And basically I've been keeping my eye out for a cool cotton canvasy kind of fabric for the pants. And I have high hopes for this. High, high hopes. Also thrifted these two pairs of white jeans because do you know what? I've gotten really into patchworking denim in recent days. I don't know what I'm going to make with them yet, but the colouring is basically perfectly the same for both of them. So I think they're going to work well together to make either a cool jacket or a cool shorts or jeans or something along those lines. I don't know yet, but cool. And the last thing I got was this lacy kind of prom dress it's got these long sleeves i think it's lined with like a taffeta or like it's a crunchy kind of voluminous fabric and it's kind of like t length and it's got this cool drop waist and i just really loved it on when i was wearing my docks so listen i think i'm gonna upcycle it i don't know how yet whether i'm gonna make a whole new patchwork vibe around this base or if I'm just gonna roll with this original fabric and design and maybe just reshape it and kind of tailor it and such. I'm not exactly sure but I'm excited about this one. So huge apologies if that was a little bit bright out there. It's a 32 degree day in Brisbane. It's hot and it's sunny and it is what it is. Thank you for watching my thrift haul. I think it's actually time now to get into it. Okay, we're in the kitchen, I've got my apron on, and I'm going to dye my fabric. I've been interested in natural dyeing techniques for a while now, and I'm so excited about it because I feel like it can add a lot more interest and variety into my fabrication. Especially when you thrift fabric, a lot of the time you're just running into plain white cream sheets, 100% cotton. And that's awesome quality fabric, but it just might be a bit boring. And that's why I'm very interested in the possibilities of natural dye. So I've been taking an online learning class at the moment to learn more about this technique and start putting my dreams into reality. 
from the class I've learned what supplies I've needed I know the basic techniques and foundations of how to do this and I've also learned about some natural dyes that I have access to in my home kitchen I'm excited the class I've been taking is called botanical dye 101 creating sustainable natural and stylish clothing by Geraldine Levin and I've been taking it on my favorite learning platform of all time, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, painting, crafting, music, and beyond. There are so many of the natural dye classes that I'm interested in taking and I've saved them all to my my classes section for future. Guys, I'm gonna take all of them, every single one. However, if you don't know where to start with your learning journey on Skillshare, they have something you might like called learning paths. Learning paths are hand-picked sequential class collections designed to help you master a specific skill or competency. They build on one another and they help reinforce the skills that you're learning. I'd highly recommend checking out the learning paths on Skillshare if you're interested in getting into a new hobby, skill or learning experience. Like recently I've wanted to get back into my journaling practice so I've selected this learning path called Reconnect to Yourself with Guided Journaling and I've been working through it. I'm up to the Wong Janus class called Journaling for Grounding and Positivity, a seven day practice with cello meditation music, and it is absolutely beautifully made, very inspiring, and I'm so glad to get back into my journaling practice in 2024 with the help of this learning path. Take your creative passion to the next level with Skillshare. It is honestly the first place that I go to when I'm obsessed with a new skill or craft or hobby, or I wanna learn something new for my small business. I know you're gonna love learning on Skillshare as much as I do, and that's why I'm stoked that Skillshare have a great offer for you. The first 500 people to click the link in my bio will receive one month free of Skillshare, so jump on it if you are keen. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I love Skillshare. Let's get into the video. <laughs> it already looks so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, I ended up splitting my fabric into two pieces and the first piece I dyed for 15 minutes in the pot and then I added some detergent out of curiosity and it took my turmeric-y, orangey yellow into like a deep orangey red rust color which I'm actually super into and now I have my second pot that's just finished and that is like the very turmeric yellow so I'm gonna wash these in cold water hang them out to dry and then we should be able to get playing with the fabrics After some deliberation, I've decided that I'm going to try and copy the pattern of my Uniqlo jacket. This is my favourite jacket. I love it. I love it. And yeah, if I can get something similar to the shape, I'm going to be real happy. I'm not very experienced in copying patterns off pieces of clothing that I own, so it's going to be an experiment. However, I am pretty excited to use this tool that I inherited from my grandma. It basically has like the handle of a spoon or fork and then it has this spiky pinwheel on the end. And for the longest time, I was just like, what is this? And then I saw a TikTok and one of the uses for it is basically if you run this over your clothing that you're tracing and there's paper underneath, the pinwheel will leave an indentation on the paper so that you'll be able to effectively trace your garment without piercing it or, you know, getting ink or texture markings on your clothing. I've used it before and it is sensational. I just traced around all of the individual pieces of the jacket, which were the sleeves, the pocket, the collar, the front and the back body and the back body was divided into a back and a back yoke. I also made sure to add seam allowance to all of my pattern pieces wherever it was needed, which is an important step you can't miss out on if you want things to fit properly. I've got my front and back pieces for the jacket. The back will be cut on the fold and it also has a yoke section which will go at the top and the front will just be cut twice 
It's got a little bit of extra seam allowance here so that we can fold it over to make our facing for the buttons and the buttonholes. And both of them have extra length at the bottom and that's so that I can fold it up to create the hem as well. I've also created a collar piece and that's just from tracing my jacket. There's one pocket that I really enjoy from my jacket as well. And I'm just stealing these two pieces, a square, which I will cut down the middle, and this curved pattern piece. And these are from the Brigida Helmerson Zero Waste Workwear Jacket. And I really liked how these pieces help finish the bottom edge of the jacket. So I'm gonna give these a go. The two thoughts before I begin cutting my fabric are, I don't know what sleeves I want yet, so I'm going to draft them once I've got the body finished so I can get kind of a vibe check. And the second thing is, I've just learned that turmeric fades really fast. I thought it would fade naturally over time, but apparently it's like really, really fast. So I was going to do a big patchwork vibe, and I just feel a little bit not incentivized to do that because... Perhaps you won't be able to even see that work soon because of fading. Sad, but we're at the beginning of natural dye learning journey, so it's okay. When they finished drying, look how similar they ended up being. When they were drying, one of them was so much darker than the other, and now, so similar. I really wanted to show the contrast of the two fabrics even though it was subtle so I decided on this striped textile which I made by just making these strips probably about three inches wide and sewing them right sides together to make this cool stripey textile and I also just overlocked all of those edges so that it was clean and ready to go. Also I just cut out the front two pieces and now I'm just going to do this exact same stripe patchworking for the back piece. And then I'm going to construct everything but the sleeves. I have no idea if I have enough fabric. I think it's going to be extremely close. Which is very scary. I cut out the rest of my pattern pieces. And then I made sure to take my stitch length to a really small stitch length. And just run over all of the seams that I cut through. Because sometimes they have the tendency to unravel if they don't have their back stitch there anymore. So... That's a securing stitch, and then I ironed it to make sure that it was nice to work with. Okay, this is the vibe. I love it. <laughs> I love the vibe. I'm like a little bit sad that I know it's not going to last, this colouring, but I'm just going to persist with the delusion of this is forever. We're making forever right here. I decided on French seams for the back yoke and the shoulder seams just because I knew they would be getting a lot of wear. So I sewed them wrong sides together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, trimmed that seam allowance, pressed the seam, and then I sewed that again, this time at a half inch or so seam allowance. And that way your raw edges are encased in that little seam that you created and it just creates a sturdy seam. Okay. We've got yoke attached. We've got shoulder seams attached. I'm gonna do the inside of this facing portion here, the collar and the hem. Ayo! Okay, I'm not good at explaining this step, so bear with me. But basically, I folded over a one centimeter seam allowance to the wrong side of the jacket. And then I folded the rest of my seam allowance over to the right side of my jacket. This is the front facing where we're going to put the buttons and the buttonholes. And basically we're trying to create a nice neat finish. So when that's folded over to the right side, you can just sew that down. And that means you'll be able to flip it right sides out and you'll have this kind of neat seam finish right at the top and at the side. Again, bad explanation, but I hope you can see the process. It's really scary making videos about garments that I don't really feel confident in making. <laughs> like I've made a few collared blouses and I've made two jacket things with collars, but I it definitely does not equate to confidence in this area. So you're gonna have to forgive me if this ends up being terrible. But basically my plan of attack with each step is just looking at my Uniqlo jacket and just trying to decipher what order the steps were done in and then just hoping that my brain figures it out ah. collar time this was my first time doing a collar with this technique and i have to say i really enjoyed this 
way of attaching a collar. I basically cut out my collar pattern twice and I sewed it right sides together down the short edge, the long edge and the other short edge, leaving the bottom edge open so that we can flip it right sides out. Then I just trimmed my seam allowance and I proceeded to flip it right sides out using my little tool to make sure that the corners were nice and pointy and crispy and lovely. I pressed it and then I also tucked underneath about one centimetre of seam allowance and pressed that down as well. And that's just there so that when we attach the collar to the jacket, uh, all of the seams will be beautifully encased. I then aligned the center of my collar to the center back of my jacket, pinned down just one side of the collar to the jacket and sewed that down. There's probably like one inch where I didn't attach a collar to on either side of the front and that's just so there's like room to overlap where the buttons are. I hope that makes sense. Not sure if it does though. Anyway, once this part is sewn down, then you can kind of press your seam allowance up into the collar and overlap the collar over that seam allowance. And basically, when you put your pins through the collar, it should kind of come out the other side of the collar perfectly. <laughs> Listen, I'm really not sure how to, if I'm even explaining it right or whatever, but hopefully you can see visually the gist of what's going on. I basically then just stitched that collar down so it was fully attached and then I also top stitched this section down as well. This was how my Uniqlo jacket was designed and I really do enjoy this technique. It was quite simple. Okay, I just made a mistake. I'm gonna tell you about it. Normally when I would attach a collar to a button down shirt, I'd attach the collar first and then I'd flip over the neck, this like front facing to go over the collar and then I'd flip it out. So basically this facing would like finish the edge of the collar. But my Uniqlo jacket definitely has the collar on top of the facing and I was like, what? I've never done that before. So I did the facing and then when it came to attach the collar, I was like, how do I get the collar over this section? Because it definitely sits over it. And initially I snipped into the facing in order to pull my collar over this portion of the fabric and that just meant there was a split in the fabric here and then I immediately was like oh no no that's not right and then I realized what you actually have to do is leave a small gap in the seam right at the end of the collar so that it flaps open like this and then you can just sandwich the top of the collar with it and then top stitch it closed it was pretty simple I just didn't really know the order of events and now I do I think I'm going to do the side seams up so I can kind of try it on. Okay, kind of cool. I'm really liking the fit. I really like the collar. I love the color. Even though I'm a car. <laughs> um, as I sewed up the side seam, I realized that my design was actually to have a small split at the side seam. So I'm going to just do a tiny bit of unpicking and fix my error. So sad, I just realized. Here, I have this lovely alternating stripe color. And on this seam, it just goes from yellow to yellow. Oh, these things haunt us as sewists. We're sewists. We're sad when things don't go perfectly the first time. <laughs> Basically what I've done now is unpicked my side seam, overlocked that edge so it's all clean and finished. Then I'm gonna mark where I'm gonna turn my hem up to, and then I'm gonna mark where I want my split to go. There's probably an easier way to finish off the hem of the jacket, but I just really enjoyed this method from the Zero Waste Workwear Jacket pattern by Begita Helmerson. You just use these two shapes to finish off the side split and you kind of bring them up and it also finishes the hem of the jacket. I just think it's really creative and cool and I love the look of it at the end. And yeah, if you're interested in this finishing, I would highly recommend checking out the Zero Waste Workwear Jacket pattern. It's really thought out and well explained and I enjoyed learning this technique. So once you do that little stitch, you can flip your work right sides out. Not me getting so excited about this tiny little detail. It's the little things though for real. Okay, you flip it right sides out and now it's joined properly. <laughs> 
very nice. But you can also top stitch this to this, leaving the front clean, and then it's just really finished. That last little bit of stitching is a little bit fiddly through the machine, but it's really not a problem as long as you just pin and go slowly. And then all that's left to do for this section is just finish off all of the facing and hem sections by stitching them down, which has to be one of my favorite tasks in the process of constructing this jacket. That bit of top stitch sewing was so enjoyable because it just goes all the way down the left side, all the way along the bottom, all the way up the right. Loved it. Loved it! That's my draft sleeve on. It looks good, it fits the armhole, which was my main fear that it wouldn't. But I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more volume to the sleeve, just feels a little bit tight for my liking. I like a baggy sleeve. Basically now I'm just going to sew the side seam of my sleeve up, overlock that edge, put the sleeve into the armhole, sew, overlock, add a cuff, and besides buttons and buttonholes, then the jacket is donezo. Except for this pocket, which I later decided was absolutely essential and I'm so glad I added it because it's very cute and practical. I'm yet to put buttons on, but other than buttons and buttonholes, the jacket is done and I am just like fangirling. <laughs> I love this color. It feels so energetic and sunshiny and happy and there's something about it that this whole time I've been working with it I just keep thinking you can't buy this at the store you can't buy this at the store and hey maybe you can buy a really similar shade at the store but the vibe of natural dye I'm really into it I love the variegation I love that there's patchiness I just find it very energetic and exciting and alive here are my final thoughts the pattern mashup between my Uniqlo jacket pattern drafting situation and some of the finishing from the Begita Helmerson workwear jacket worked great. I really, really like the pattern that I've come up with. It still needs a few tweaks. The next time I make it, it'll be probably just right. I'm going to wear this jacket. I'm going to keep you guys updated on how the colour goes and what colour remains in a week or two weeks or three weeks. It's going to be really interesting to see how it wears. But if the colour fades really quickly, I think I'm just going to have to try a different natural dye because I'm super into it. I'm super into this stripe colouring and I think it would look so beautiful in some other colours. So I might have to give it another go in the future. Anyway. It is well and truly into the evening and it's time for me to sign off. I'm going to finish my buttons off camera tomorrow. Anyway, I really enjoyed this day. Learning about natural dye was awesome. Making the jacket was super fun. I feel like I learned a few things and getting more confident with some practices that were really intimidating to me about a year ago. So that's exciting. And that's all really. Big love to all of you. It's time for the montage. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Also, if you like the video, smash the like. And if you want more videos, smash the subscribe, matey. Subscribe. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's go.